Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q2 of the bi-weekly contest 64, two best non-overlapping events. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, so I probably did this in a different way than most people because I generally do for these event type things. Um, though maybe not, I don't know. But yeah, join me on Discord and hang out with a bunch of people doing these contests and discussing about it uh, afterwards, obviously. But yeah, for this one, I actually, if you look at the time, I took way close to five minutes, four minutes and change. Um, the thing is that actually, if you and you can watch me solve it live uh, in, in the clip afterwards. Um, but I actually did got this really fast because this is actually one of the things that I get very quickly. However, when I did mi misread the, ex uh, the inputs and outputs. Uh, or just the inputs really, uh, where I did not consider inclusive. So for example, in this case, two to the four, I just, I don't know, I guess I just ended it at four instead of um, including four. So I make a change there. Um, you can see me debugging and stuff like that during the, the that video, but we'll go over the explanation for this one. Um, so the way that I do it is with sweep line algorithm. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I, well, I, I think that for this particular problem, it is not necessary because there are only two non-overlapping events. Um, but the, the way that I want to say to think about it is just by sweep line, right? So basically you have a line you sweep left to right, and then and as, as you kind of tr um, encounter events, you can think about what happens in those events. And because everything is independent, I find it easier to kind of uh, think about the interactions more um like the, the interactions are not um how to say it the interactions they don't interact with each other right so i to me that uh makes sense a little bit more let me pull up my drawing thing real quick um eh. okay so I'm on a new computer, I'm a new thing, so I'm still playing around with some of the setup. Uh, excuse me while that happens. But yeah, but basically I think about it as a timeline, right? And then you have you have some uh, some boxes, say. Right? You have some boxes, they overlap, they all, might not all overlap, uh, something like that. Of course, we sort them to go from left to right. So let's just say we're going from, oops, that is not a good straight ish hour left to right right and here are the two type of events right there's uh what i would like to say uh cho choosing another color so there, there's the beginning of a box event and an end of a box event right so that and these are the things that we can do okay uh let, let's skip the let's skip this one for now but let, let's look at this one right so this is the beginning of a box event and this is the end of a box event, right? So let, let's look at the one on the left first, the, end, the beginning event. So what does that mean when we see a beginning of the box event? Well, when we see a beginning, that means that we want to take... Um, well, what, uh, when we see the beginning, and there are different ways you can structure this, but this is the way that I structure it. When we see the beginning of the box, we go, okay, let's take this box. Well, how do we take this box? Well, we take this box if we take something to the right, that does not overlap, right? So that means this box uh, is, is a possibility, but these other two is not, right? So, so yeah. Uh, so that's basically how I would think about it, and we'll go over it in code in a second. Actually, I'm just gonna scroll down because now we have enough space in high res to also go look at the code, especially for this one anyway. Um, yeah. So what I do is, well, this is just set up for the events, for the sweep, right? Um, yeah. So this is from beginning to the end, and this is just the event type and then the value. Um, okay, so if this is the beginning event, what we do is, well, we just maintain the best, um, um, the amount that is currently best. Max P is the, I, I, what I call the max prefix. Um, and the max prefix is just um, the max of all the things that finished previously. Um, and then I add the current value, right? That's taking this box right here. And then now let's let's switch for a second and look at the end box, right? What happens when we take the end box or the end event? The end event, well, this is here, and this looks really like the coding looks very tight, but but there is an understanding to it, right? 
Um, and the understanding is the more obviously important part. But let's say we're here, right? What does that mean? That means that now, um, well, we already, at the very end, we all, you know, there's an invariant here, the invariant being that if we're at the end, uh, we're parsing the end event, that means that we already parsed the beginning event, right? That means that we already did the scenario where we took this box. So we don't have to worry about that one. The, the other thing that we have to do is that, okay, let's say this is the end event. At this end event, what happened? Well, at this end event, we want to make make it available, make this box available for everything in the future, right? So that's basically the idea behind line 18 is that, um, you know, the, uh, let's just re, let me rewrite this a little bit. Max prefix. Do I should do the case as well? But yeah, so so now the max prefix we we set it up to be used in the future, and that's basically the idea. So that when when we see another beginning box in the future, then it can use this if it is the max. Um, and because we only care about one box, we only have to care about this thing, right? And and whatever it is as we go from left to right. Um, yeah, and as you look at the code you can see that this is going to be dominated by the sorting. So this is going to be n log n. This, uh, I don't know if the input's already sorted, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, and I'm, and the, the thing that I missed is that it's inclusive, so you have to make sure that your indexes are correct. Um, but yeah, but this is going to be n log n uh, time, and this is all of n space for storing the events and then sorting them afterwards. Um, but after that, this is pretty straightforward in, in terms of complexity. So yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, and you could watch me solve a lot in the contest, including the debugging and how I made a mistake by accident and uh, and how I eventually read it correctly. Uh, next, ta-da.
Oh, I see. Because ending is inclusive. Uh, okay, fine. Let's wait this part. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this part, my explanation, whatever you like. Um, on Discord, a lot of contest people now are, or lead code contest people are there. So definitely share in the moment and, and you know, just chat about nerdy things. Anyway, uh, yes. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. Have a great weekend. Or um, I guess if you're watching it in the future, then maybe just have a great day or rest of the week or whatever it is. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.